Hi, I'm Alexandria from Alexandria's Lens. I'm a fantasy photographer who makes magical photos with my family. Last year, we made a pirate boat out of an old trunk and took it down to the beach to capture a fun photo of our kids. Then on Photoshop's Instagram channel, I asked people to help me decide what magical elements I should add into this photo. There were a lot of great suggestions and I added some of those ideas into my photo already, but the most requested element was a kraken. So today I'm going to share a quick tutorial showing how I blended giant tentacles into our photo. I started with an octopus tentacle photo I found on Adobe Stock and selected it with the object selection tool. Then I used the magic wand tool to fine tune the selection and converted it into a separate layer by pressing Ctrl J. Next, I dragged and dropped the layer onto the main image. I used free transform to move and resize the tentacle, then I warped it into a shape that would blend into the scene a bit better. Once I was finished, I realized it wasn't quite right, so I selected puppet warp from the edit menu. When using puppet warp, I added anchor points to bend and adjust the tentacle into the exact shape I had imagined. After I was done with that, I converted the layer into a smart object, and after some more organizing, I made some color adjustments with levels to darken it, color balance, and some hue saturation to desaturate it. Then I added a layer mask and used the brush tool with the hardness at 80% to mask away some of the tentacle and make it appear like it was coming up from underneath the water. This part can take some trial and error. Make sure to mimic the natural wave lines as you mask it away. Next, I started blending the tentacle into the scene. I added a curves adjustment layer and clipped it to the tentacle. After adjusting the curves, I masked away the areas that I planned on adding highlights to later on. Then I created a levels adjustment layer with a clipping mask and darkened the tentacle by adjusting the levels. After that, I clicked on the layer mask and pressed Ctrl I to invert the layer mask. I also used a soft white brush to darken specific areas of the tentacle, which balanced out the shadows a bit. For the last step in shading the tentacle, I clipped on a new layer and hovered over the darkest part of the image to select a color for shading. Then I used a soft brush at 20% opacity to add additional shading around the tentacle, especially where it meets the waterline. Once that was finished, I added a new layer and used a soft brush with a light yellow color at 30% opacity to paint on some highlights. I double clicked on the layer and adjusted the bottom slider to make sure the yellow color wouldn't show up on the dark parts of the tentacle. In nearly every case, I all click on the slider to separate it into two parts and fine tune it until it's blended well. Then I changed the blend mode to lighten. I wanted to make the yellow color a bit brighter, so I used the hue saturation adjustment. Here is the before and after. I also added a layer mask and brushed away a bit of the added highlights. Next, I made a new layer underneath the tentacle and used a dark soft brush at 20% opacity to add shadows in the water. Once again, I double clicked the layer and moved the bottom slider so that the shadows wouldn't show up on the light parts of the ocean. Then I selected the tentacle layer mask and used a soft white brush at 20% opacity to bring back traces of the underwater tentacle. This adds an important touch of realism because you can see the tentacle through the water. I then selected all of the tentacle layers, duplicated them with Ctrl J, merged them together, and then I flipped that layer upside down. After a bit of warping, I selected the lasso tool and used it to remove the end and placed it near the top of the tentacle. Trust the process here. I changed the blend mode to soft light, renamed the layer, and used a soft eraser tool to remove hard edges. Next, I went to filter, liquefy, and clicked and dragged sideways to create a watery effect. I adjusted the size and pressure for longer streaks to mimic a natural reflection. After I lowered the layer opacity to around 60%, I added a Gaussian blur to blend it in further. Adjust it until it looks right to you. Then I double clicked the right side of the layer and adjusted the bottom slider so the reflection wouldn't show up on the brighter parts of the ocean. Lastly, I added a layer mask and gently brushed some of the reflection away. After that, I dragged over a picture of a water splash with a solid black background, changed the blend mode to screen, and used free transform to place it where the tentacle meets the waterline. I used a layer mask to remove part of the splash. Next, I used the brush tool and held down Alt Option to select an ocean blue. I created a new solid color fill layer, clip masked it, and changed the blend mode to overlay. Then I lowered the opacity and applied a Gaussian blur. Before I added more splashes, I realized I needed a bit more blur, so I selected the tentacle layer and went to Filter, Blur Gallery, Field Blur. Field Blur allows me to apply different levels of blur around my objects to match the background perfectly. Simply click on the areas you want to blur and adjust the blur on each point to create some focal depth. After I finished that, I continued adding splashes and water droplets around the tentacle. Here's a quick recap of the steps. I also used the lasso tool to select the water droplets from one of the water splashes to create more movement around the tentacle. After blending in a few seagulls at the end, I think it's looking pretty magical. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thanks for watching.